Hey guys, welcome back. Adam Rose, Western Ohio Mortgage. I'm the Vice President and Senior Loan Officer here in Sydney. And this is a continuation from our interview last week with Matt Eccles from Billings Insurance because we ran a little bit long, so we got a two-parter here. So now we're going to continue with our interview from last week. Okay. So in addition to that, you could look at maybe you want to cover your wife's ring. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about, right? So so there's writers, yep. right? And things there's that additional you things that you, can ske- that you can schedule on the policy that says, I want specific coverage to this. Mm-hmm. Because if you looked at coverage A through F, those are all standard things. Now, everybody's situation may be different. You may right. have this, you may not have this. And that's where we look at. Like the other structures, you may have a $100,000 mm-hmm. property or $100,000 building. We need to add that on there specifically. Okay. So. Yeah, because I know like things like I, I have added my wife's ring. To it. They ask for an appraisal and all yep. that fun stuff. We just we just add it now, and they want to verify that. They want to verify right. what do you have. Okay. Yep. Exactly. And then, um, so uh, it's been raining for the last couple of days, right? <laughs> so I want to talk about this because yep. you know we've had clients call us. I you know it's really weird. Um, I always do the analogy. You know when people when, when things go south on their property, um, I do the car dealership analogy. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, so when you go buy a car, you go to the dealership to buy the car. And then you have outside financing, right? So if something goes wrong with your house, are you going to the person giving the money to buy said house or are you going straight to the dealership that sold you the house, right? right. So I get these calls all the time. I try to direct them to the right person. Obviously, step one is always insurance. Just contact your insurance agency see yep. if this is covered. And we're going to talk about the claims process and how people can do that so they're sure. not scared of doing it. Because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, eh, I'll just take care of it. I don't right. want to. I don't want my insurance to go up. I don't we, want this to happen. we love that. Yeah. I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. It keeps the losses down. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. you know, so it's been raining a ton yep. and people get flooded. Now, I'm, I'm putting this in quotations, right? Quotations, because yeah. there are different styles of being flooded. Uh, so do you want to elaborate yeah, so, on that a little bit? So I'll elaborate on that. So we, if you think of a lot of cases, we, with those specific coverages, mm-hmm. if somebody has a basement, we're going to add. You know, based on the if the basement is finished, we're going to add ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars of water backup coverage. Right. So a lot of times, what happens? We get a ton of rain, and all of a sudden, sump pump fails. Now we have to have the water backup of sewer and drains coverage mm-hmm. listed on the policy and amount for that. That is not typically covered. Um, however, if you were to have a flood, uh, and when I say flood, think of it as surface water intruding into the home say it comes into your window well it, right the water starts just pouring down your gutter falls off and it all of a sudden it's pouring down in your in your window well fills up the window well floods into the basement that right. is not covered right that is surface water coming in and so we would have to either write a flood policy for you to cover that or you know it, it, it but it depends on the loss i mean it depends on the cause of loss right so, so like sewer backup so we always say sewer backup and you always think city right like there's air in the lines mm-hmm. and it backs up you flush your toilet and oh my god everything's coming back yep. um what, Which, so, i'll say this municipalities are not going to pay for that well pff, no yeah. of course not a lot of people misunderstand yeah no they're not touching they're, that. they're not touching they're like that. that's on you yeah um so out in the country so mm-hmm. let's say you have a break in your i don't know your 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 sewer line that goes out to your septic system air is mm-hmm. getting into it water's rushing into it yep. right you flush your toilet and it backs up. Yep. I would autom- I would assume that would be covered in the sewer backup, but we may not find out until it gets all dug up. Right now, has that uh, initially? You're probably like, "Yep, yeah, file the claim. We go through this process. Here's the money. We right. get the contractors out there." Now, what if the contractor goes out there and says, "Hey, we need to go ahead and run a new line." And they find out, well, this thing was cracked the whole time, and they report that to the insurance. Would that be reversed, or would there be something going on there, or would they cover that? Because so- that's that's kind of unknown. Yeah, it could be just considered water backup, of right? And drain. So okay. we could pr- that would probably get covered under that. There's going to be X amount of dollars for it. We got to we got to pick that amount that that would be covered. However, it, with a lot of it, and I think what you're alluding to is what if what if tree roots get into the get in the line? That could be one thing. Or if if someone accidentally had some really heavy equipment and drove over a part of their yard that they shouldn't have been driving mm-hmm, over. Right. No, that didn't happen to me yeah. though. <laughs> I don't know. I, so what? So what you want to? What you, an additional coverage that we could add to your policy would uh-huh. be service line coverage. Okay. Yeah, so that line, that service line, and that could line could be water, electric, gas, mm-hmm. sewer, anything that is servicing the property. That would be something that we could apply it to there. Okay. To add that, not every company offers that. <clears throat> it's starting to get more and more popular, but mm-hmm. not every company has it. And typically, it's only ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of coverage for that specifically. Sorry. You're handsy. It's I all know. right. Ah. It's all right. Talk with my hands. Yeah, we uh, I do the same thing. So, <laughs> uh, so on this, we're talking about riders. What about what about roof situation? 
right? So, um, uh, yeah, a, a lot of misconceptions on, on roofs. I mean, if you go to a, uh, let's go to Menards, and you're going to say, hey, I want to buy a 30-year roof, a 20-year right. roof. There's a reason why they say 20-year or 30-year roof is because it's probably only going to last that long. Right. So if you're lucky, if you're lucky, if yeah. you're lucky. So a, a, a very common misconception is a lot of people think that, hey, I'm buying a house and I'm never going to have to replace a roof because I hear everybody gets insurance claims and they get their roof replaced. But to dive into that a little bit deeper is you get full replacement cost on that roof from year zero to 15 with most companies. And after that, it goes to ACV. Okay. So ACV so coverage. Explain that. Yeah. ACV coverage is just like you had the car car analogy. Mm -hmm. Let's say you buy a car. It's brand new. Everything's good. You got a warranty with it. Excellent. Now, at year, let's say in the roof terms, year 15, or in the car terms, is now it breaks down. Your warranty is gone now. You know, you had a five-year warranty. We're at year 10. There's no warranty to cover that. So you have to consider your roof being 15 years of age, now you don't get full replacement cost on that roof. Right. Think so, about depreciation. Exactly. So let's say it's exactly. 10 grand to replace a roof, and it's a 10-year-old roof. You get to year eight, you've lost 8,000. You got $2,000 that'll be paid out. That That's that's simple math. Now, that's, I'm sure that's not how it works in yeah. insurance. Right. I'm just it's saying a little different, it's almost like depreciating yeah. it. Yeah, right? you're, you're dropping down. So after 15 years, that's when it goes down to, okay, the, the roof is, let's say it's 16 years old. It is going to be covered at let's. I'm just using broad numbers. Sure, every yeah, carrier yeah. is different. It could be they're going to cover seventy percent of the damage, right? And it may be just to the front, it may be to the back, it may have to. You want it to all match, but it, and either way, the adjusters are going to take care of that and determine that. So if it's, it, but in essence, after year fifteen, they're not going to give you a full new roof. I heard adjusters can be bribes. So make sure you have some liquor on hand when they come out to visit. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> That's on them. So. So yeah, so so ACV because I actually have ACV on one of my investment properties. Yes, you know, yeah. uh, it helps keep the premium down. Also, yeah. uh, if you assume, hey, I, I'm not worried about the roof because you know it's five, eight years old, whatever. We don't have uh, any you know branches hanging over it that I'm concerned right. about, and it's only the wind that that I may have to replace a few shingles. And it actually keeps your premium down a little bit too if you do that sure. option. Good ACV I would assume. coverage. Yeah. Yep, actual cash value. Um, so it's good. Gonna be depreciated. It's going to de get right. depreciated down. So. Let's 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 dive into that a little bit more though. So let's talk about cause and effect, right? Okay. Um, so we go through a lot of high winds, right? Yep. It rips off. I don't know half a dozen shingles off your roof. Someone wants to make a claim. What does this look like? So it doesn't make sense to make that claim. It probably doesn't. Right. In, the, okay. in that case, you hope to have a couple extra shingles around where you can just repair it because in in but ninety nine percent of all cases, you still have a thousand dollar deduction. Right. So and, you're but let's say they're use, they're trying to use this as an opportunity because it's an old roof to get a new roof. Right. Right. So what what does that look like when the insurance adjuster comes out there and they're like, you know, there's no asphalt left on these shingles. Right. We're only missing, you know. Yep. So my job as an insurance agent is going to go out and help to try to figure out and determine the age of that roof. Mm -hmm. And so I will determine whether I need to put full replacement cost on it. And I may ask the customer or the person if they're, they're, they're just buying the house, do they know how old this roof is? And if they know, that's great. But otherwise, i got to try to make a determination of what the age is because that actually plays into your insurance rate. Mm -hmm. So the, the newer your roof is, with, it can go either way. I don't want to confuse anybody. You can, you, can go, you can get full replacement cost, but at – I won't go into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, 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 too that, much. It's, it's it too hurts much. my brain. Yeah, yeah. So, but in all reality, if it's a twenty-year-old roof, you know, I'm going to put twenty years on it. You're going to get ACV coverage. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, if you do have a win loss, they're going to come out. They're also going to determine that. There's ways that they can actually test the roof to see how old it is. Right. And so they're going to send that off for testing and different things. Um, but in all reality, if it's that age, it's going to be ACV. They're going to pay you a depreciated amount, 80%, 70%, 60% of the overall damage. But in that case, with losing like 12 or 15 shingles, right. whatever the case may be, that's just... Because you're also there, there uh, I mean, you're also there to say, hey, you should or should not make a claim on this. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean... I'm going to I'm gonna try to help that steer that customer in the right, right. direction. Right. So, yeah. I mean, and I don't like the word steer in our industry. Gotcha. <laughs> The reason I said I, that, I, I get it. The I reason it. I say that is because it's illegal to steer, yeah, but, sure, but like sure. you have their best interest in mind. I mean, if it's yeah. if it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, you could pay a thousand dollars for a fifteen hundred dollar repair if you want to, yeah, or, or you, can, you or could you can just have a claim, go do it yourself, or, 
pay the thousand dollars and then they're gonna, the insurance company is going to pay you five hundred. Well, your rate's going to go up. Yep, next year by exactly. Does it make sense? Like right, so, right. Yeah. So you're in that process and helping those clients yep. determine whether, if it makes sense to make a claim or not. Exactly. Right. It's the same thing with car. Does yep. you know if you get an offender bender, but the, you know the bumper only costs you four hundred dollars to get it replaced and, re and painted. Do you want to spend five hundred dollars on your deductible to do this? It right. doesn't make any sense. Yep. Um, so it's good that you're there to, to help them. Yeah. Guide, and guide and, them and that is, that, that's a lot of the reason why we're an independent agent. So a lot of people don't know that, you know, you, you're, I'm here to help you. If you yeah. call your big carriers, your, your, and I won't name names or anything like that, but you call big carriers. Sure. We they're, can they're, name they're, names. They're, they're starting a claim for you. Let's start name dropping. Yeah. No, because <laughs> that's the benefit to us being independent is I'm not going to start a claim until you really need, or I feel, and you feel that we need to actually start that claim. Right. So. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to wait. You let me know. Oh, we can. I can. You know, give you some contractors to talk to. Anybody like that to help you fix that that issue. But I'm not going to submit a claim until you're absolutely ready to submit that claim. Right. So, right. And, and okay, let's talk about that real fast, and then we'll kind of move on to our uh, sure. next topic. Um, submitting a claim. How much time do they have? They have a. There's. A, it's a gray area, but in yeah. essence, you have. A, let's say a year. Let's okay. say a year. Two years maybe. to keep it fresh, right? So, yeah. So, and, and in essence, from us and our side, we need to submit. If you call me and tell me that there's going to be a claim, mm -hmm. I need to submit that to the carrier right away. They need to know. They want to know. And so, I will. I have to make a determination of is that is this situation where we actually need to submit a claim, or do I need to hold off a little bit? But from my side, I need to submit the claim to the carrier if they call okay. me and ask me about All it. Right. So, yeah, because I, I could see, you know, if there's a major issue that someone wants to get maybe a quote and be like, I want to kind of see what we're dealing with here first. Yep. I want to make sure it's not one of those things where it's like, Hey, something happened. If I don't call, you know, in 72 hours, it's going to, this case right. is going to get cold, like a missing person case. Yeah. And I'll never get the, this claim through. Yeah. The carriers <laughs> want to know. And we, and we right. try to submit those when, it, Good. when it's warranted. Good. Is there anything else on those topics that we, we believe that a home buyer should be aware of some do's and don'ts or anything like that? Uh, Cause the last thing I want to touch on is just if something were to happen, what is this process look like when submitting a claim? You know, how long does it typically take? Obviously, it does vary. Yeah, it um, does vary. Um, so when we submit a claim, the, the carrier wants to know they're going to jump on it right away. They, they typically try to assign an adjuster in 48 hours. You know, if it's a weekend, if it happens on Friday, somebody may not get placed on that. Adjuster may not get placed on that until like Tuesday of the following right. week. So step one, they're going to call you. They're going to call me. And you're, they're just going to give you a brief, brief description of, yeah, like, I'm here's gonna, what I'm, happened, I'm here's what's going on. All the questions to, hey, try to figure it out. What happened? Was it wind damage? Was it this? What caused this? Whatever the case, I'm going to try sure. to get as much information as I can. And so you're and putting then, that report together. Yes. I'm going to put that together, and then I'm going to submit it to the carrier, and then the carrier is going to take it from there, and they're going to call the customer. Mm -hmm. And so the adjuster, like, a lot of people think, I, my insurance agent is going to pay the claim. I don't pay claims. Right. Me, personally, I don't pay claims. The carrier that you that we put you with or anything, they are going to pay the claim. So we submit that, the adjuster looks at it, and they're going to deter determine the cause of loss again. Is it water backup? Is it flood? Is it this? They're going to go through all of that and figure out what it is that, that caused the loss. Is there, is there a case for the claim? Yes. All right, we're moving forward. Yeah. So now they're going to say they're going to do their own research on how to repair that, what it's going to cost to repair that. However, they're going to ask you probably to get a contractor out there to, to sure. figure it out. Sure, and you know a lot of people stress out about this because it's another thing they have to deal with. Yep. Right. It's just it's just just how we are. It's human yep. nature. It's like yep. you know I've got work, I've got kids, I've got this, I got that. Now I got to deal with this. Yep. So to alleviate some of that stress, if I called you today, I had a claim on my house. I don't know the siding got ripped off from wind. From start to finish, from the time I call, do you have a, a rough idea typically on when an insurance makes a determination on yes, this is a valid claim. We will pay this out. Here's how much they'll pay out, yeah, right? I know it's going to vary. It's that's but situational. Do you, you kind of have an idea, like, hey, if usually it's in, obvious. If yeah. it's wind damage, yeah, it's going to get paid. Yeah, this is the claim. Now, you know, I'm trying to think of a, a situation where it's like, yeah, that's kind of questionable whether that's going to get paid, and it could be a, a flood situation, whatever. Right. Whether it was surface water, sure. or whether it was whether it was your drains, they're going to they're going to de determine that or help determine that. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, a lot of it you need to cast the customer and like, hey, let's go through it. Just, just be up front. Hey, what happened? What happened? What caused the loss? Let's let's get it figured out. Right. So. Well, that's all I got for you. All right. That's it, man. <laughs> you good? That's a lot of information in a short period of time. There's a ton of information. And and so insurance can be very, very complex, but that's why I say, you know, talk to an independent agent. Independent agents are your friends. 
you know, and we we're we're gonna do our best to shop with different carriers to see what coverage fits for you right. in your situation. Yeah. You know, if it's a protection class ten, you know, there's there's a lot of rate determining, a lot of factors that go into that. So we're we're gonna be your friend in this process to try to get you the best coverage that you can. Yep, very good. Well, thank you for the information, and I I hope all of our realtor friends are out there listening to this, and uh, all of our buyers that that might be looking to purchase, or even when they're doing the refinance, that they have to take a a second look at what might be affecting their insurance rates. It's always good to to shop that around, regardless of how comfortable you are with where you're at. It doesn't hurt to shop. Exactly. It doesn't hurt to shop. What's the worst they're going to say? It's a little bit higher, a little bit lower. You don't make a move. It doesn't impact you in any way. It might take you 20 minutes of your time. Yeah, right? Exactly. We try to be super fast about it's everything we're, we're not overly difficult is we're it a 24 hour turnaround you call us we're right. gonna get you a quote hopefully within 24 hours. exactly so. so uh so guys take a look at that and uh you know that's an important piece of the home buying process as well because we have to get that information uh the quotes uh to make sure your payments are estimated correctly and when we get your coverage enforced for closing we know what we're dealing with who we're paying when it's in effect and when it's enforced for uh that way when you go to the closing table your house is covered even when the seller is still living there Right, so that's a good. That's, a good that's something we didn't even talk about. Right, yeah. they're living there. You are covered during that time. Exactly. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to contact us. Feel free to contact Matt Eccles over at Billion Insurance. He is in Anna, Ohio. And that's it for us this week. So remember, when you watch the video, like it, love it, share it with your friends. Subscribe on YouTube. It's really easy. You just have to have an account and click that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you any money. And check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.